In this video we're going to talk about proving trigonometric identities. There are two different methods that we can use. The first method is we can start with either the left or the right side of the equation to obtain the other side. This method works great when one side is 1 or 0 or maybe something simple like cosine of x. The second method is work with each side separately until you obtain the same expression. This works great when both sides are equally complicated. So you always want to work with the more complex side first. So let's look at a couple examples. All right, here we want to prove the identity 1 plus sine of 2 theta equal to sine theta plus cosine theta squared. So clearly I'm going to pick a side. In this case, I'm going to pick the left side because I see sine of 2 theta. And I remember that sine of 2 theta is equal to 2 sine theta cosine theta. So I'm simply going to replace what I have here for sine 2 theta with this expression. So I'm going to end up with 1 plus 2 sine theta cosine theta. On the right side, since we have a quantity squared here, I'm going to go ahead and write this out. Sine theta plus cosine theta times sine theta plus cosine theta. I'm going to go ahead and FOIL this out and I'm going to get sine squared theta first outside plus sine theta cosine theta my inside plus sine theta cosine theta and then last write it down here plus cosine squared theta. So now I can combine like terms and I'm going to be left with sine squared theta plus 2 sine theta cosine theta plus cosine squared theta. And if you remember, there's also a Pythagorean identity that says sine squared x plus cosine squared x equals 1. So I see a sine squared theta, which is the same thing as x, and a cosine squared theta here. So when I add these two together, which I'm doing, these two things are actually going to leave me with just a 1. So I'm going to get 1 plus 2 sine theta cosine theta. And if you look at what we had on the left side of the equation, 1 plus sine theta cosine theta, they now equal the same thing and I'm done. Alright, so looking at this next example, the first thing that I see is this secant on the left hand side. And if you remember, secant of x is equal to 1 over cosine of x. So I'm going to go ahead and rewrite the left side of my equation. Cosine x minus 1 over cosine of x. And this needs to be equal to my right hand side. We have sine x times tan x. I'm going to go ahead and write tan x, which we know to be equal to sine x over cosine of x. So I'm going to go ahead and rewrite that. Sine x over cosine of x. So here I have cosine x minus 1 over cosine x. In order to be able to do anything with this, I need my denominators to be the same. So in order to do that, I need to multiply both the top and the bottom by cosine x. And when I do this, I get cosine squared x over cosine x minus 1 over cosine x. Now I'm going to go ahead and simplify the right side of this. I have negative 
sine squared x all over cosine x. So now on the left hand side, since I have a common denominator cosine x, I can go ahead and rewrite this as cosine squared x minus 1 all over cosine of x. And I'm going to keep the right hand side of my equation. Okay. All right, so at this point, I see that I clearly need a little bit more work to get both sides of the equation to equal each other. And this is looking really familiar to me. So if I remember, the Pythagorean identity tells me sine squared x plus cosine squared x equals 1. So if I move the cosine x over, I get sine squared x equals 1 minus cosine squared x. Well, this is still not exactly what I have over here, but if you look on the right hand side, I have a negative sine squared x. So what happens if I multiply this entire thing by negative 1? I get negative sine squared x equals cosine squared x becomes positive and my 1 becomes a negative. So now, as you can see, I have the same thing here as what I do over here. So now we can use substitution and I have negative sine squared x over cosine x equals negative sine squared x over cosine x. And now, in fact, the left and the right sides equal each other, and we're done. All right, so let's take a look at this next example. This is kind of what I was talking about earlier. The right side of my equation equals zero, so there's really nothing that I can do to the right side of my equation. So we're only going to have to manipulate the left side of the equation. So looking at the left side, we have two denominators that are completely different. So in order to be able to add these two things, I'm going to have to get my denominators to be the same thing. So I'm going to have to multiply this one by 1 minus tangent of beta on the top and on the bottom. And then I'm going to have to multiply this one by 1 minus cotan beta on the top and on the bottom. Okay, so on the top we have 1 minus cotan beta times 1 plus tangent of beta. And now on the bottom we have 1 minus cotan beta times 1 minus the tangent of beta. And that's going to be plus 1 plus cotan beta times 1 minus the tangent of beta all over the same thing because that was our original goal was to have both denominators be equal to each other. All right, so now I have all of this out. I can FOIL. I'm going to do my work up here to try and save some space. So I'm going to take a look at that one. So if I do first, I get 1 outside plus tan beta. Then I'll have inside minus cotan beta and last I'll have minus cotan beta tan beta. Okay, then on the other side we'll change colors. We'll do that one right here. First I have 1 outside minus tan beta inner plus cotan beta 
and last minus tan beta cotan beta. Alright, so combining the top, since I have my same denominator now, I'm going to take the blue, 1 plus tan beta minus cotan beta minus cotan beta times the tangent of beta, and then I'm going to add it to the purple. So we're going to add 1 plus tan beta I'm going to add 1 minus tan beta plus cotan beta minus tan beta cotan beta. Sorry, I kind of ran out of room. And this is all over my denominator, which we can go ahead and foil that as well. Inside 1, outside is minus tan beta minus cotan beta plus cotan beta tan beta. Okay, so I know this is a lot, but let's just take a look and see what we have. I have a I have a plus tan beta here and a minus tan beta here, so those two things are going to cancel. I have a minus cotan beta here with a plus cotan beta here. These two things are going to cancel. Okay, and what's left on the top, we have 1 plus 1, which is 2, minus 2 cotan beta tan beta all over our denominator 1 plus or 1 minus tan beta minus cotan beta plus cotan beta tan beta and I'm sure you're probably looking at this and wondering how in the world are we going to get this equal to 0 so we're almost there I want to look at this right here. If we rewrite cotan in terms of tangent, I will have 1 over tan beta times tangent of beta. And my two tangents will then cancel out, and what will I be left with? I will be left with 2 minus 2. 2 minus 2 equals 0. So now, if I have 0 over all of this mess right here, it's still going to equal 0, because 0 divided by anything is still 0. So now, as you can see, my final answer is 0, and that's exactly what I needed it to be, and we're done. All right, last example. The first thing I see when I look at this problem is, yet again, this sine 2 theta sine 2 theta is going to equal 2 sine theta cosine theta. It's always a good idea to go ahead and write down any any formulas that you may see when you look at some of these um, proofs. So now we say, okay, we need to do something with the left side of my equation. Here we have 2 tan theta over 1 plus tan squared of theta. So looking back at our Pythagorean identities, if I have 1 plus tan squared theta, that equals secant squared theta. So knowing these two things, let me go ahead and write out what I'll have. I have 2 tan theta, which we can go ahead and write as sine theta over cosine theta. Then we just discovered that this 1 plus tan squared theta can turn into secant squared theta. And like I said before, I'm going to go ahead and replace the sine 2 theta with 2 sine theta cosine theta. 
All right, so now I want to maybe try and simplify the left side of this equation. Maybe let's try and write secant squared theta in terms of its reciprocal function. So I would have 2 sine theta over cosine theta over 1 and secant, if we remember, is 1 over cosine. So we'll have 1 over cosine squared theta. If I simplify this, 2 sine theta over cosine theta, keep it, change it to multiplication, and then flip it, cosine squared theta over 1. Now I see that this cosine will cancel with one of these cosines, and I'll be left with 2 sine theta cosine theta, which is what we had on the right-hand side, and we're done.